Um, welcome back to Toronto. Great to have you here. Thank you. And how important it, how important it is is it for you, my friend, to have a film at the Toronto International Film Festival? Um, it is. It. I, I can't tell you how happy I was to find out that, that we'd gotten in because, um, as I said before, um, four years ago was my first TIFF. Um, this being my second, and uh, also a couple of years ago, I actually was shooting in Toronto for like almost three months, oh. and so it's b become very dear to me. So you know the city, city pretty well. I mean, I'm okay, not great. <laughs> I just, but I just love the people and I love the feel of it. So it's more than just a holiday destination. We have a very close kinship with Australians, I think. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I don't know what it is about Australian filmmakers, and I always say this every time I see an Australian film, but what is in the frickin' water there? You guys make the best movies. Thank you. That's very, very kind. Honestly, what is it about Australia, the filmmakers, the actors? Really, I love, I love your cinema. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, I think there's a similarity in our cultures, um, but I don't know if that similarity is necessarily you know, transitioning into our film. I don't know if that's why you would like our film, because I think our film and your film would, I'd say, are quite unique, you know, and quite, um, you know, mm. quite unique from each other. But the, there is that kinship between us, isn't there? This, yeah. That sort of, um, yeah, we're all, we're all under the queen. We are, I was just gonna say, God save the queen. Okay, let's talk about this film, Cut Snake. Oh my God, okay, seriously, I was like, I don't even know why I have nails still on my fingers. It was so intense. Thank Did you, you even feel that way at all when maybe you read the script for the first time oh, or started yeah. shooting? Absolutely. Well, when I first read the script, I was really gripped. I thought it was a great, you know, script, wonderful character. Um, you know, I, I really thought that it was great. I said I love this, the style and the genre. Um, I love the tension of having this dark figure just looming over my shoulder if I got to play this role. And then when it got to about two thirds of the way through the script, there's that enormous twist. Um, and that really hit it home for me because I felt that it was totally unique. Um, and I felt that the twist was, was shocking and unexpected, but I didn't feel that it was any, in any way self-indulgent. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I thought it made the first two thirds of the film make sense. Yeah. Um, I was like, well, of course, but even though it's totally unexpected, it tied in beautifully and truthfully with that. Yeah. So that hit it home for me. Working with Sullivan, uh, mm. wow. I mean, he's obviously one of the reasons this is so intense, but mm. he is like just a powerhouse. What was he it like? He is a powerhouse. <laughs> it's an excellent description. Sully, I learned a lot from Sully. I really, really did. He, um, he is a raw, organic, monster of an actor like he is uh, he, his he's so, it's so impressive because he's so free and before a take he'll just be mucking around and I learned I learned a great deal from him about not trying to control things um, and I, I had one one thing that one one time that sort of springs to mind we were doing a scene and Sully said to me I was sort of felt like I wasn't quite getting it and I just couldn't, you know, I felt like I wasn't getting the shape of it or whatever. And I felt like I wasn't being truthful and I was trying to, you know, beforehand just to get, and Sally just goes, don't think like that. And then we just, and I was sort of rattled by that. And then we just went and, the, and it was so much better, you know, I just yeah. felt freer and um, yeah, particularly in this, he's just a beast. Yeah, he, he totally is. He is ferocious. Wow, yeah, and I know, I'm sure you must have seen him in 300 just recently. Did you get to see it? I haven't seen, seen, seen 300 seen it. Wow. No. He, yeah, there's a really good scene between him and Eve Evergreen. Oh, really? Check it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. just, that's all I'm telling you. The sex scene? <laughs> oh, yeah. So I hear. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. it's, yeah. I hear it's pretty great. Yeah, I don't want to say anything because <laughs> you kind of know I'm on that level. But anyways, um... Yeah. <laughs> You um, have been named, you know, rising star in Australia. You're getting a lot of attention. What is it like for you, you know, to keep and keeping yourself humble and keeping your head on your shoulders? Um, I just, I'm grateful. I, I'm grateful. I, I find those things that are written down in different places very flattering. Um, I don't, I don't base my overall happiness on that. I try to just keep, keep level and. Um, draw my happiness from 
family and the sun shining and because I've fallen into a trap before yeah. of you start to become reliant on you know you sort of validate yourself through you know what someone thinks of your work or what many people think of your work and I've found it to be something that ultimately is is not healthy but I think that you can still appreciate it on a healthy level and go well that's nice yeah. so I'm just grateful for it I think you it's have to nice. you have yeah. to appreciate it I do yeah. I do yeah, yeah. Um, and as you said you spent time shooting here we know you were in Carrie and that was uh, that yeah. was a great great role for oh, you great super ex- fun yeah lots That'll... of you know look at Chloe now I, I mean I know I, holy yeah. you know really to watching people rise into fame and it's yeah I mean I caught her in a time like I got to know her in sort of a transitionary period from being like this girl to now like now I see her like two years later and she's this woman and it's yeah. like oh my gosh crazy but yeah, yeah but great that experience. was a wonderful experience and I have to ask you I mean we are gonna see you this December in a huge film my friend unbroken mm. first time you met Angelina Jolie just give me that little scenario um, I was in Sydney I'd just finished Cut Snake. Uh, no, I was in the midst of shooting Cut Snake. Uh, we did, I did one day of my shooting on Unbroken in the middle of Cut Snake, um, just because they kind of overlapped. And I met her on set like maybe the day before I was due to shoot or two days before I was due to shoot. Someone just took me to set so I could just meet her. Mm-hmm. And just total sweetheart, um, very in her element and excited about what she was doing and this was months and months and months in and still felt totally fresh as if it was she was like it was day one you know she's I think Louis is a a, a massive idol for her and a, and a hero for her so I think that she took it upon herself to really make sure that she told the story well and to the best of her ability because it's such an incredible story so yeah. you know working with Jack O'Connell did you have fun? Oh, he's great. Yeah, he's great. He's a real lad. Um, similarly to, to working on with the actors on Cut Snake, it was like, just felt a real sense of generosity. Like, I was there with him. It doesn't matter where the camera was, whether it was here or here or from a wide. We just felt like we were just there for each other, you know? And, you know, obviously I was on that on a considerably shorter time frame than, than him. There's all these chapters of different people in Louis Zamperini's life, and he's on it the whole way through months and months into shoot and again like Angelina not tired just totally there totally generous yeah I another guy it. who was in 300 I know is that I weird know. Know. what's so with you and working with the 300 actors I don't know is this in your contract I like the abs <laughs> I knew it. See, I just wanted you to say that out loud. Yeah. So just as we're wrapping up. I knew up, I was thinking. I knew you were thinking. I can, I can read. I told you, there's this kinship there. Yeah. 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 So just quickly, just to wrap up, you're going to, I'm telling you, people are going to see you in this and they're going to go, holy crap. Then they're going to see you when I'm broken and they're going to go, holy crap, crap. So what kind of roles or who would you like to work with if you had your choice after this? Oh, man. Wes Anderson, mm-hmm. um, Quentin Tarantino, uh, Martin Scorsese. If I could ever work opposite Leonardo DiCaprio, I could shoot myself afterwards and be totally fine with how my life went. Um, gosh, uh, R- uh, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> um, lots of people. Lots of people, yeah. lots of people. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of you, and we hope that you'll come back to uh, Canada and shoot some more films here. It's a pleasure to meet you and talk with you. I'm so excited. And, uh, you know, like I say, this is so spectacular. You're so, so good in it. That's so nice. Thank you. I really, that that means a lot to me. Well, I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, it really was uh, was a nail biter. It was great. Good yeah. job. Yeah, you still got your nails. I do. I told you. They're I know they're fake. They're, you yeah, see, they are fake. He, he's, he's, this is a smart guy, not just a great actor. Nail a implants. smart guy. Yeah. I like you. Yeah. I like you. <laughs> well, my pleasure talking to you. No, yeah. Thank likewise. you so much.